give words of knowledge. And so we're going to have a set time here in just a little bit for words of knowledge and personal uh, prayer ministry. But I'm just going to share a quick word with you, 25, 30 minute teaching, and just encourage you um, in, in your in pursuit of healing and walking in healing. And so if, for all of you that know me, you know that I'm a minister, that I believe in personal responsibility. And I also think this is kind of a missing aspect of, of people walking in healing and walking in wholeness. And so I'm one of these ministers that my ministry focus is not just ministering healing to people, but creating within them a mindset or a paradigm and biblical practices that helps them walk in healing for themselves. And today I really felt like the Lord wanted me to share with you just two basic uh, practices that I have on a daily basis that, that helps me steward uh, healing in my life. And for you that know me very well, I've been walking with the Lord for about 19 years. And I've only been sick, honestly, for one day, one time over the past 19 years because I've learned some of these principles of how, how to walk in healing, how to steward that. And so today I want to uh, I want to teach you how to partner with the Word of God in relation to healing. And the first practice that I want to give you that I have is actually a belief system. And this belief system is simply this. The Word of God is medicine that produces health in all of my flesh. That is a belief system that I have. And so I actually view the Word of God as I'm studying it on a daily basis. I view it as like a daily vitamin that I am taking. And I know that that word is producing health in all of my flesh. And for, for you that may be wondering, well, where am I kind of getting that idea or getting that belief system? Well, well in uh, Proverbs chapter 4, 20 through 22 says this, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all of their flesh. Even though this is talking about the wisdom of Solomon, but ultimately this is the wisdom of God and the wisdom in his words. And notice what it says, that these words produce health in all of our flesh. And so this is my encouragement to you, family. If you're going to walk in healing, if you're going to walk in health, if you're going to walk in wholeness, as you get before the Word of God on a daily basis, form this belief system that it is medication. It is medicine for your physical body. It is like that daily vitamin that you, that you take that's going to produce life. And I'm here to tell you, it's a thousand percent better than any daily vitamin that you can, that you can possibly take. And I remember probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, I was ministering on this subject and teaching um, as a pastor, teaching the people how to partner with the Word of God for healing. And I remember this man came up to me at the end of the message, and he said, well, William, he said, why don't you teach on something most, that's more relevant to my life? You know, and my response to him was, what's more relevant than health, than walking in healing and walking in wholeness? And I got to pondering upon what this man was saying because he had some physical ailments in his life, and so it didn't make sense for him to make that statement to me. And so I got to thinking about what he could possibly mean. And this is kind of the conclusion that I came to as I began to look at modern society and the modern world that we live in. And I, and I came to this realization that, you know, we live in a time where there's all these modern advancements in medication and the medical profession that is so easy for us now just to lean upon or rely upon a medical practice rather than going to the Lord for, for healing, rather than going to the Lord for health and learning from Him and putting the Word of God to work in our life, where it's easier sometimes for us to take a Tylenol or to go to a doctor, and there's nothing wrong with that. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I champion the fact that we have advanced in medical science and medical practice and that there's, there's things and operations out there that can help and assist people. But the point that I'm trying to make right here is that when you go to a doctor, it's called a medical practice, emphasis on practice, which means their knowledge and what they're doing is limited. It is based on the current research that they have at that particular time. And so when you go to a doctor, doctor, you are relying upon that knowledge that they have to prescribe medications to you. But when you go to the Lord, he doesn't have a medical practice. He's not practicing. He is not limited in his knowledge. He has all understanding and all knowledge. 
And when he prescribes his word to you, that word right there is complete and total and brings fullness of healing into your life, not partial healing into your life. And in the same way, when you go to a doctor and they prescribe a medication to you, that well, they may misdiagnose you. Well, God is not going to misdiagnose you because he knows all things. And it's the same way when you take a, a medication. With every medication that you take, there are side effects to those medications. But with God's word, there is no side effects. Well, let me say it this way. There is no negative side effects to God's word. There's only positive side effects to God's word. Because when you look uh, at commercials and you watch commercials, and we've all probably have all seen these commercials where it'll go something like this. You know, if you have this kind of headache or this kind of back pain or this kind of blood pressure, you can take this medication here. This will knock out your headache or your back pain. But however, the side effect is you're going to have runny stools for six months. I, mean, I know it's kind of funny, but I've seen so many commercials like that where by the time they you look at all the symptoms of the med medication, you're like, well, I'd just rather keep my headache or my back pain. Well, it's not that way with God's Word. It is medication to, that brings wholeness of life, fullness of life to all of your flesh. And so with that in mind, I just want to read Proverbs chapter 4 one more time, and I want you to get this truth inside of you. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Listen to what it says. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all of their flesh. Family, what if you begin to wake up in the morning Instead of taking that, that multivitamin that you took the Word of God and you pl pl placed that Word of God inside of your heart on a daily basis, what if you formed that belief system that it is bringing health to all of your body? I promise you, this right here is a daily practice that I have that's been effective, that's been, that's been strengthening my physical body for quite some time, and it works. I'm here to tell you the Word of God is powerful. And when you have this belief system that when you put it inside of you, it is going to bring health to all of your flesh. But there's another point that I want to make right here. And that's in, actually in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, the very next statement, it says this, Keep your heart with all the diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So not only is the Word of God medication that brings health to all of your flesh, it is also medication that brings health to all of your soul. You know, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And so the Bible literally connects the, pros uh, the prosperity of the soul to physical health. In other words, even science has even proven right now that thoughts take on physical forms in your body. So if you think sick, it's going to take on a physical form of sickness in your body. And so one of the things that I do is I allow the Word of God to get into my heart. I allow it to affect my soul. And the makeup of your soul is just simply your mind and your will and your emotions. And what I do is I allow that Word to equip my soul with the reality and authority that it carries. And so... I, I focus a lot on resting my mind upon God's Word because then I know my soul will be at complete and total peace. And if my soul is at peace, it's not going to manifest itself in forms of sickness in my physical body. Family, I know I'm saying some powerful truths right now, and I know these are very basic truths right here. But these are practices that will absolutely transform your life. I believe the transformation of the life is based on the, these, ba these daily basic principles and disciplines that we form with God's Word that we do consistently on a daily basis. You know, I don't miss a day of studying His Word. Every single morning when I get up, I spend about three to four hours a day just studying His Word, just getting it inside of me. But I have this paradigm that the more truth I get inside of me, the more health, the more wholeness is producing in my body. The more health, the more wholeness is producing in my mind because it's focusing my mind upon truth instead of lies, instead of things all around us. Well, I would like to suggest to you that I think there are three major issues 
or, or, or things or tactics of the enemy that comes against our soul that results in people walking in sickness. And that is an offended heart, a bitter root in the heart, and unforgiveness. All three of those are aspects of the soul or aspects or agreements of the heart that we, that we attach, that are attached there, that we come into agreement with, that produces sickness in our life. And how I know this was probably about two years ago. I had this, this person that was in my life, and they treated me very badly. And I developed an offense in my heart toward this person. And I didn't really realize I was carrying offense in my heart toward this person until about six months ago. And so I'm about to bring you into a personal matter, a heart issue that I was dealing with. Maybe, and hopefully this will make sense for you and help you as well. Well, about six months ago, my wife and I, we were at Burger King, and I went there. This is right before I went on my carnivore diet, by the way. And I went to Burger King, and I bought this Whopper, and I took a bite of this Whopper. And as soon as I took a bite of this hamburger, the left side of my face swole up, kind of like a balloon. And I'm a man of healing. I'm a man of health. And for you that know me, you know I don't tolerate sickness. And so I immediately start speaking to it. I immediately start rebuking it. I'm commanding healing to come into my body, and nothing is taking place. I mean, it's swole up the side of my face, about the size of my fist right here. And my wife is watching this entire uh, transaction happen as I'm, as I'm doing this, and I'm speaking to my uh, jaw, and nothing's taking place. And immediately, probably 15 minutes into this, the Lord speaks this word to my heart. And the Lord says this, William, you have offense and bitterness growing in your heart toward that person that mistreated you. He says, you need to forgive that person of that and release them of the offense that's in your heart. And as soon as I forgave the person that mistreated me, and as soon as I released that offense that was in my heart from that person, immediately that, that my jaw went right back down to normal. And my wife is watching this whole thing take place. And I asked the Holy Spirit, I says, Lord, why couldn't I see breakthrough and healing when I was just commanding it or speaking to it? And this is what the Lord told me. He said, it was not a healing issue. He said you could have you could have commanded healing into your physical body all day long and nothing would have ever happened because it wasn't a sickness issue. It was a heart issue. And he says until you dealt with the issue of the heart, it manifested itself in the form of sickness in your body. But as soon as you dealt with that root and you pulled that root out of your out of your heart, the symptom of that root left as well. And when the Holy Spirit spoke that word to me, family, I realized how many people actually come to healing services. They come up to the prayer, they receive prayer, and nothing happens. They don't, they don't, they don't see a breakthrough in a healing. Well, it may be because there's, hum there's heart agreements with offense, with bitterness, and with unforgiveness in their heart that is manifesting itself in the form of sickness. And until that person deals with those bitter roots in the heart, that sickness is still going to be in their body. I just wonder what would have happened in my life if I had not caught this, this, this situation quickly. I feel like the, man, the manifestation of my, of my jaw swelling went immediate because I identified the problem immediately. But what if I would have lingered with that? What if I would not had discovered what that problem was it was in my heart? How difficult would it have been, really, if I went two months with, or three more months with unforgiveness and bitterness and offense in my heart? Or maybe a year? What about 20 years? What kind of manifestations of sickness would have been in my body at that point? I just wonder what it would have looked like. And to be honest with you, I'm so thankful that I was able to hear God's voice in that situation and lean upon the insight that he gave me to deal with these issues of the heart. So again, family, you need to partner with the Word of God. You need to have this paradigm right here that the Word of God is medicine that brings health to your physical body, that the Word of God is medicine that brings health to your emotional self to your soul your mind and your will and your emotions As a matter of fact isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon the lord and so this is my encouragement 
with you family with this this first practice right here is get that word inside of you on a daily basis. Go to it like you would go to a doctor. Go to it like you would take that multivitamin. Get that word inside of you and allow it to do its work in your life. Here's another example of what I'm talking about of an offended heart. And this is actually a story where Jesus goes back to his home country, to his hometown, and he goes there with the intention on bringing the Word of God to them as well as the power of his kingdom. He wants to demonstrate healing. He wants to demonstrate miracles in their life. And I want you to pay attention to the response of his hometown people to his message and ministry and how it hindered them from receiving the healing ministry of Jesus. And so in Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, we have this story right here, and it says this, Then he went out from there and came to his home country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And when and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which, he is given, which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, brother of James and Judas and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. And so you have this story right here. Jesus goes back into his hometown. He goes there to teach. He goes there to demonstrate the kingdom of God. But here are these people that knew him prior, and they're looking at Jesus, and they're thinking, well, isn't this this guy that we used to know years ago? I remember when I first got saved, and I started attending a church and, and you know my history is, is alcohol drugs atheism and so my history is that you know I was not a, a good person you know I needed Jesus just like any sinner I sinned and I remember I started attending this church and the pastor told me several years um, several years later he says you know when you first started coming to church and the Lord was really using you and miracles was happening through your life he said there were people that would come up to me and say well, why is God using William don't isn't he the one that used to drink alcohol that used to do drugs isn't he the one that used to break into these stores and terrorize people like why is God using William I'm the one that's been faithful I'm the one that's been seeking the Lord the whole time I'm the one that's been praying and I've been the one that's been fasting and my pastor would say to them well you're telling me why God can't use you is because you're making it about you and you're connecting what God does in your life to your performance and to your works that says William understands it's by his grace it's by God's grace that he is being used William understands that his that he is not qualified in himself that qualification comes by Jesus and I remember the pastor telling me the, these things and, and all this, some of them were actually my friends and I didn't even know that they secretly didn't even like me because God was using me and was not using them. Well, they were offended in their heart. And because of that, it was limiting what God can do in their life. It was limiting what God could do through their life because they were connecting God's goodness or they were connecting God's move, movement in their life to their performance. Where here are these people right here, they see Jesus and they have this, these memories of Jesus. like, And they're offended at the wisdom that he has. They're offended at the power that he's walking in. And it's almost like these people that were toward me, like, why is it God using me like this? I'm, I'm special too. I'm valuable too. And so they form this offense in their heart toward Jesus. But notice how this continues to manifest. And it says this here back in Mark chapter 6. So they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, My prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there. Now to me, that is a powerful statement, brother. It is a significant statement. That means Jesus went there with the intention of doing powerful miracles in their midst. So notice that the offended heart of unbelief it didn't stop Jesus from providing healing. It stopped them from receiving healing from Jesus. Well, family, this is exactly what an offended heart would do. This is what will off offense would do. This is what bitterness in the heart will, will do. This is what unforgiveness in the heart would do. Is that it doesn't stop God's provision of healing in your life. It just stops you from receiving that provision in your life of healing. And it stops the manifestation of that to take place because these inner agreements of the heart 
is blocking or hindering you from receiving what Jesus is trying to give you. And this is exactly what took place in his hometown. He could do no mighty miracle there. He wanted to do a mighty miracle, but he could not because the people would not receive him, would not receive what he had to bring. And it goes on to say this, except that he did lay his hands on a few sick people and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about all the village, I mean, about the villages in a circuit teaching. And so you notice right here that the offended heart of unbelief and bitterness and unforgiveness right here, that it literally hindered the healing ministry of Jesus. And so if it hindered the healing ministry of Jesus, how much more will it hinder what God can do in our life? Well, family, this is my encouragement to you is is even as I'm talking right now, I feel like the Holy Spirit is probably bringing some things up to some of your lives and showing you, listen, you have some agreements there that may be hindering you from receiving healing in your body. Family, this is something that I've, I've put into a, a practice as of late since this, since this experience I had six months ago, that on a daily basis that I'm evaluating my heart. Now, let me phrase this in a different way. I'm evaluating my heart with the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to go introspection, introspective within myself. I'm trying to allow the Holy Spirit to highlight things inside of me that I need to cut off and deal with because if I allow the Holy Spirit to highlight it, there's healing that comes to the soul. But if I try to pull it out or just snatch it out in my own strength or my own wisdom or understanding, then I end up doing damage to my heart or my emotions. God wants to bring healing to us. And so my encouragement, when you do go inward, go inward with God, go inward with the Word, go inward with the Holy Spirit, and allow Him to highlight the things that need to be highlighted. Because the reality is every single one of us can go inward and come out not feeling good about ourselves because all of us fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, for we all have sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. And so... Again, allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to uh, show these things to you, not you try to dig them up. And so this brings me to my next, my next uh, practice that I have. And the very next practice that I have is that I use the Word of God as a weapon of warfare. And the avenue in which that weapon flows through is my voice. And I understand that my voice is a weapon. My voice is either a weapon for life or my voice is either a weapon for death. That's why Proverbs chapter 18 says, Life and death is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. And, and so when I understand that my voice is a weapon, it changes the dynamic of my speech. Matter of fact, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 says this, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is your weapon of warfare against sickness. I remember back in 2006, this was the last time that I was really dealing with something, all the way up to this issue I was dealing with six months ago, where I learned this principle of using the word as my weapon of warfare. And I remember this violent sickness came over me. I, I was burning up with a fever. I was vomiting. I was going to the bathroom every 20 minutes. And it just went on for four or five hours. And I finally got to this point where I said, you know what, I'm tired of dealing with this sickness. I'm tired of tolerating with this sickness. I know there's an answer in God's word that's going to help me fight this battle. And so I just started going through the scriptures, and I came across Isaiah 55, verse 3. It says, For by his wounds we are healed. And so I grabbed a hold of that passage of scripture. I grabbed a hold of that weapon. Because here's the thing, family. Not only do you need a knowledge of truth, you need to know how to properly apply that knowledge or properly apply that truth. And so I took that truth, I took that weapon, and I started speaking to that sickness in my body. And I started speaking to that fever, to the, to the vomiting, and I started c commanding it to leave for me in Jesus' name. And I went on for another hour just commanding and fighting with the Word of God. And I remember the last moment I was dealing with this sickness, I walked to, the, to my bed. I'm getting ready to lay down on my bed. And as I fall down on my bed to go to sleep, because I was exhausted, as soon as my head hit the pillow, 
It felt like this person lifted off of me, and this sickness left in that moment never returned again. And I realized this, this principle, oh, this, the Word of God, it is my weapon of warfare. And the avenue in which it flows in my life is my voice. And so when I was speaking to that sickness, it had to bow to the name of Jesus. It had to, uh, to bow to the authority of of God's Word. You see, the only Word that carries the authority of God's voice is the one that He spoke. And so when you identify truth in every situation in your life, that is a weapon of warfare, and your voice is a weapon. You need to understand what you, what you equip your heart with becomes the overflow of your voice. In other words, you get truth in your heart, then the, prop the prophetic utterance of your voice will be the weapon of warfare of truth. And so that's what I learned in that situation. But here's another thing. Sometimes we fight our battles with truth, but we're fighting our battles with the wrong truth for the wrong situation. For instance, what if the only truth in that situation that I would have used to fight my battle with was, uh, was the fact that God never leaves me nor forsakes me? Well, that would have brought peace to my heart, but it would not have brought a solution to my problem because it is a truth, and I'm fighting my, the, the situation with truth, but it is the wrong truth for that situation. You see, you got to identify truth that is relative to the situation that you're in. If you're dealing with sickness, you got to find truth that's relative to sickness and then use that to speak against that sickness. That's what's going to bring the breakthrough family. And I learned so much in this. Even Isaiah 54 verse 17 right here echoes what I'm talking about. It says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. You see, you shall condemn that coming against you. You know sickness is a weapon that is formed against you, but it will not prosper. It shall not prosper. You need to learn to speak to whatever is speaking to you. And when sickness is trying to come against you, that sickness is speaking to you. Oh, you have a fever. Oh, you have a pain. Oh, you have this going on or that going on. Do not give that voice a place of influence in your heart, but rather resist it. Rather, for instance, the way that I resist things, about three years ago, I had this back pain that was happening, and instead of me laying down on the couch, you know how I resisted it? I went on a two-mile hike, and when I went on a two-mile hike, I'm resisting that sickness, and I'm speaking to my body. I says, body, you're not going to give in to this back pain. You're not going to allow it to attach to your body, but you're going to, you're going to exercise authority. So I'm just speaking all these things to myself, Sure enough, that back pain leaves. I get completely made whole from it. Why? Because I was resisting it. You see, I have the belief on the inside of my heart that I see myself as healed resisting sickness. I don't see myself as sick trying to get well. Just that one shift in thinking right there will, will absolutely transform the way that you uh, live your life. And so, again, Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, For by his wounds we are healed. By his wounds we are healed. Get that reality and that truth inside of you, family. Isaiah 54, 17, again, get this in you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is for me, says the Lord. In Mark chapter 11 right here, we have a story. And I think this, this story right here, even though it has nothing to do with healing, but it captures a principle that I want you to understand. Because what happens when I teach something like this, sometimes people say, well, I've been fat fighting my battles with the Word and I've been speaking to it, but I'm still not seeing breakthrough. It's still Nothing is happening in the natural. And I always take them to this story right here of when Jesus speaks to this fig tree. And I want you to notice the process that happens when Jesus speaks to this fig tree and he curses this fig tree, but that fig tree doesn't wither the moment Jesus speaks to it. Notice right here in Mark chapter 11, 12 through 14, and then we'll drop down to verse 20. It says this, now, now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see, see if perhaps he would find something on it. 
When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was the, not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard. And so you see, Jesus comes right here. He looks at this fig tree. It's not producing fruit. And so, the, and so he makes this declaration. He curses this fig tree and says, you shall never produce again. Well, you'll notice, and right, we hop down to verse 20 right here, that that fig tree did not wither the moment that Jesus spoke to it because it says this, the next morning as they passed by, they, referring to the disciples, saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now that's a key phrase right there. You see, the moment that Jesus spoke to that fig tree, something happened. But, the, the, but there was no visible manifestation in the moment that something happened. You see, what took place is when he cursed that fig tree, it started drying up from the roots up. And so immediately started, something started taking place. And so it's the same way when, and when sickness, when sickness is coming against us and you using your voice and you're speaking to it, something is happening the moment in which you are declaring, the moment in which you are speaking, something is taking place. However, it may be the next day before you see the physical manifestation of it. It may be the next week. It may be the next year. But you need to understand that something takes place every single moment that you speak the Word of God, whether you see it in the, in the natural, in the visible, or in the spiritual, something is taking place. And, I, and this is a principle that I have. I know when, I, when something's coming against my body and I speak to it, even though they may not be a physical manifestation of, of that being leaving right then in a the moment, I know that it's already a done deal. I know it's already settled because it's, it's drying up from the roots up. And so what I do is I speak one time to it, and now I know, well, I'm just resting in the Lord. I'm resting in what I spoke, and I know in due time this is going to be dealt with. And I've seen this be so effective in my life, family. And I hope I'm giving you a paradigm of thinking or a way of thinking. I hope I'm giving you practical practices that you can apply to your life on a daily basis that will help you walk in the reality of these things. In Matthew chapter 8 right here, we have a story of the centurion that comes to Jesus and he understands the authority of, of what Jesus speaks. He understands authority and he, he connects authority with, with, with the word. And I want you to pay attention to what takes place in this centurion's life when he comes to Jesus for healing or to bring healing to someone. Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 10, it says this, now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The, listen to the centurion's response. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. That's an amazing statement to me. This centurion understands that the only thing that he needs to bring healing to his servant is just a word from Jesus. He doesn't need Jesus to physically go to his house. He understands the connection between authority and God's voice. And, and then he explains it. He says, for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another one, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And so Jesus right here says he has not found such great faith. People that understand the connection between God's word and authority, that when he speaks something, that word carries the authority of his voice, the authority of his power, where it contains that inside of it. And so this centurion understands this connection, and so when he goes back to see this, see his servant, he already knows it's, it's, a, it's a done deal. Do you know that faith, Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ? So if faith comes by hearing, how do you think unbelief comes? Unbelief comes by hearing. Unbelief comes by hearing other voices. It may even be coming by 
the diagnosis that you have received from a medical doctor. And again, they're limited in their understanding. They're speaking out of the resources that they have, the understanding that they have. I'm not speaking against that, but what I am saying, if it contradicts God's word, that's not a voice you want to listen to. That voice is undermining the reality of God's truth and God's word in your life. You need to go with what the Lord says. You need to get the word of God inside of you until it produces faith to walk in healing and to walk in wholeness. I think the primary way that the enemy attacks us in our life is by getting us distracted with the facts of life instead of the truth of God's promise spoken over us, over us for healing. You know, in John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, We shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. So by that context, the truth we don't know is actually what's keeping us bound. So all bondage is a byproduct of a lie believed, and the power of a lie is simply the ignorance of truth. Well, we, well the way that we can deal with ignorance is getting knowledge, getting understanding inside of us, going to the Word on a daily basis. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so when you get the Word inside of you, you're equipping yourself. You're training yourself. You're silencing the voice of every liar coming against you because you're equipping your mind and your heart with truth. And that truth operates as a weapon and it flows through the avenue of your voice. Well, to illustrate this, this point right here of the difference between facts and truth, I want to share with you a story out of Luke chapter 1 about a man named Zacharias and a woman named Elizabeth, which is the father and mother of John the Baptist. And even though this has nothing to do with healing, the principle of it can be used in the area of healing. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 11, Zacharias is having his angelic visitation. He's a priest and he's doing his priestly duties. And this angel appears to him and this angel begins to give a prophetic word over his life about his wife giving birth to a son. And let me ask you, family, if you had an angel appear to you tonight and this angel gave you a prophetic promise about your destiny or about your healing, for instance, would you believe that angel? Well, let's see how uh, Zacharias, this man of God, his priest, handles his angelic visitation. Verse 11 says this in Luke chapter 1. An angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled when he saw the angel and fear gripped him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard. And so this angel has come in response to his prayer, and now he begins to give a prophetic promise over Zacharias, and notice the verbiage that the angel uses. And he says this, Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a fall runner before him on the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the father back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous as, so as to make a people prepared for the Lord. Family, this is a remarkable prophetic promise right here. This is overwhelming to me. I can imagine how I would respond if an angel appeared to me tonight and says, your wife is going to have a son that's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit while in her womb. I would be overjoyed with this prophetic promise. But notice how the man of God responds to it. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know this is for certain? And I'm thinking to myself when I first read this, what do you mean, how do you know this is for certain? This right here is an angel standing in front of you. How, how do you know this is for certain? An invitation, an angelic visitation is right here telling you it is for certain. You know what Zacharias is doing in this situation? He's asking the Lord for another confirmation. How many times do we do this in our life? We go to God's Word. His Word will be clear as what His will is for that particular situation. But then we fleece God and say, God, well, I need two more confirmations so that I know that this verifies a promise in my life. But notice what Zacharias follows up with this confirmation seeking. Is he now tells this angel why the word cannot happen. And he says this, For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. You know what Zacharias is doing? He's taking the facts of his life and prophesying to the truth of his promise. Instead of taking the truth of his promise to prophesy to the facts of his life. 
How often do we do this, family? We, we have a natural situation in our life. We say we have a natural sickness in our life that we're dealing with. That is a fact. But just because something is true doesn't mean that it's truth. I want you to think about what I just said. Just because something is true doesn't mean that it's truth. All truth is a fact, but not all facts are a truth. You see, the only one truth out there, and that's the truth of God's Word, that is the reality that you need to anchor yourself to. And so Zacharias is learning something right here. And what he's about to learn is based on the angel's response to him, where it forces this angel to have to justify his own existence. And this is how the angel responds. He says this, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. And I've been sent to speak, this, speak to you and bring this good news. And he gets a little frustrated with Zacharias. And, he, and he's like, who do you think I am? I'm Gabriel. Don't you read the Bible? I come from the presence of God. But notice what the angel does in order for the promise to come about in Zacharias' life. And he says this, Behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day which these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their proper time. And so the angel has to close the mouth of Zechariah for the duration of time so that the promise can come about. In the Lord, when I read this story, the Lord spoke to me. He said, In that situation, his silence carried more authority than his voice. And he says, William, if you cannot speak anything in faith, it is better for you to remain silent and allow my promise to come about in your life by its own design rather than you speak against it. In other words, if Zachariah could have talked during this nine-month period, his words would have aborted his promise. Family, this is how the enemy attacks you. He comes against you with this sickness. That is a fact. That is a natural thing that, that you're dealing with. But that doesn't have the authority to determine the reality in which you live in. The, what, the word that contains the authority to determine the reality you live according to is what God says. And the truth says, Isaiah 53, verse 5, once again, By Christ's wounds, by his wounds, I am healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 echoes the same thing, saying, By his wounds we were healed, referring to the work of Christ on the cross. Family, these practices right here that I'm giving you, uh, I want you to take it home. I want you to ponder upon these things, and I want you to allow it to transform the way that you are thinking because it's going to equip you to be able to not just receive healing, but to actually walk that out on a daily basis. And so as my team is getting ready here to give some words of knowledge, I want to take a moment, and I want to pray for you just, just real quickly, and I'm going to have them give some words here in just a moment. But the first group of people that I want to pray with are those that may that have that may be dealing with that offense, that bitterness, or that unforgiveness that's in your heart that I I think is is a key root to to for you to receive healing, or this hindering from you from receiving healing. I've seen it so many times in people's lives. And so for you, I just want you to close your close your eyes. I want you to hold your hands like you're receiving a gift. Holy Spirit, right now, over every single person that's coming, that's I mean that's watching, I ask that you would come upon them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet right now. And I just speak to every internal agreement in their heart with unforgiveness, with bitterness, and, and, um, and, a, and offense to, for that to be uprooted right now in the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, I want you to say this with me for you that are receiving this prayer. Right now, I break agreement with offense, bitterness, and unforgiveness. You don't have a right to be in my life, and I now relinquish that from your from from my life and i can now command you to leave my body if you do that right now i believe your healing is beginning in your physical body and so with that i speak healing from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet in the mighty name of jesus and so right now as my team is ready to give some words of knowledge i want to go ahead and move over to them now you guys get ready to receive thanks william the first word of knowledge I have is I saw a picture of a brace over like the forearm and the wrist. Um, so if that's you, if you have to wear a brace um, for any condition, maybe it's a sprain or a break, um, just engage your faith right now as I, as I speak over you, as I pray over you. So right now in Jesus' name, I command full healing um, over people who have hurt their wrists and their forearms. Um, I command healing over anybody who had a fall 
you know, use their hand to catch and they've got a sprain, um, some, some pain that's still, still there. Um, and I just command all that pain to leave right now in Jesus' name. I command um, bones to be healed. I command pain to leave. I command muscles to um, be loosened in Jesus' name. The second word of knowledge I got is that I heard the name grace, and I felt like you needed healing in your legs. So if that's you, um, I just encourage you to, to lay hands on wherever it is that um, has pain in your legs. And right now, I just command full healing in your body, grace, in Jesus' name. Um, broken legs to be healed, sprained ankles to be healed, um, shooting pain from the hip to the foot to be healed right now in Jesus' name. I also got chronic soreness in the joints. Like every time you get up from something, it's like it's hard for you to get moving and walking. Um, so if that's you, put something in the chat, do something, stand up, engage your faith um, with these words that God does want to heal you today. So right now I bless all your joints in Jesus' name. If you have pain, if you have soreness, that, that just won't leave. It feels like every day it's there, it's there um, again. And I, I just come in at any spirit of infer, infirmity to leave your body right now in Jesus' name, that there would be no demonic attack that would prevail against you. Um, and I just speak, um, yeah, just healing and peace over your body. The last uh, word of knowledge I had is ringing in the right ear. So if that's, if that's you, just go ahead and put your hand over your ear. And right now, in Jesus' name, I just release complete healing over your ear. In Jesus' name, I pray for all, all noise, um, any damage, any trauma to the ear to be canceled in Jesus' name, for there to be peace, stillness, quiet in the ear when there's no noise. In Jesus' name, I release that. Back to you, William. Yeah, as I'm looking at some of the comments right now, I'm seeing that many of you feel like it was a breakthrough. It's all that offense and bitterness that's in the heart is, is just coming off of you. That is your first step to, to walking in wholeness. Just like it was with me when I, re, when I let that offense go from my heart from that person that, that mistreated me, that ma manifested in my body with wholeness and freedom. So I feel like some of you right now, your step that's the first step toward you walking in health is letting go of those in, uh, internal agreements of the heart, but I also saw that someone's dealing with some shingles. You know, my grandmother dealt with shingles for years, and it's one of these things that I, I, I really hate. You know, I hate all sickness, but there's some things I really despise because I've seen firsthand the impact that it will have on someone's physical body. So I just speak right now over you that's dealing with those shingles. And I just speak healing from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And I just speak to those sh shingles and I curse it at its root. And I command it to dry up from the roots up right now in the name of Jesus. And I just speak a blessing from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. I see that somebody else was also having issues with the stomach. Even before coming to the service, I had this, uh, uh, this, this word of knowledge for someone dealing with stomach pain. And so I just speak right now to those stomach issues, stomach condition, whatever it is. I speak wholeness into the stomach right now in the name of Jesus. I command all that pain that's in the stomach to go right now in Jesus' mighty name. And so I speak a blessing from the top of your head all the way to the bottom of your feet. And listen, family, I'm going to turn it back over to one of our students here that also has a word of knowledge for you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sam. I'm a first-year student at GSSM. Um, as uh, I was just praying about what to say, I felt like someone here has sharp chest pain about right here. And so I just command all that chest pain to leave their body right now in the name of Jesus. Um, I also felt like someone had pain in their left shoulder or shoulder blade. Um, I just also command all the pain in that left shoulder or shoulder blade to leave right now. In Jesus' name, we just command it all to leave their body right now. Um, I feel like there's someone here with uh, some uncomfortableness or pain in their upper back. Um, we just command it and we speak to it and we just tell it to go right now. In the name of Jesus, no more pain. Um, and uh, just uh, again, as I was praying, I felt like I saw a woman with black hair who got into a car accident and hurt her wrist. Um, and so we just speak to that wrist right now and we tell it to be fully healed in the name of Jesus. And then um, I also felt like I saw a man um, who fell off of a ladder and um, hurt his back. And we just speak to that back and we tell it to be fully restored. Any breakage or any pain, we tell it to be restored in Jesus name. And back to you, William. Yeah, I'm seeing someone making a comment right now that you have a scattered mind, demonic chatter, and, and, and head pain. 
You know, for, for years I had a friend that dealt with, with demonic attack, particularly against, against the mind. And I would always encourage him to continue to press forward, continue to press into it. And so, I, I, brother I, or brother, sister, I want you to know that there is breakthrough right here for you. The grace of God is going to meet you right where you are. And so I just speak right now to that demonic assignment coming against the mind, coming against, the, coming against your, your thinking or trying to disrupt your thinking or patterns of thinking or put strongholds in your, in your soul. I speak to every demonic assignment coming against you, and I plead the blood of Christ as a holy separation between you and that demonic assignment. So I just command right now every afflicting spirit to be lifted from the body, and I speak peace, peace, peace over the mind right now in the name of Jesus. Peace in the soul, even peace in the memories. And I even feel like the Lord is restoring memories right now for you This if there's in relation to trauma or traumatic events in your life. Well, I feel like the Lord is bringing peace in those areas of memories for you. So I just speak that over your mind. And I also declare that tonight you will lay down and go to sleep and rest, 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 rest in Jesus' mighty name. I even see that someone is also dealing with bad circumstances circulation and so I just speak to that circulation that's in the body in Jesus name to function according to proper design I speak to your body right now to operate as God designed you to operate and here's the reality family our body is created to live in a healthy state. It was not created to live in a sick state. And so what I'm calling forth right now is for your body to come back into its proper default state of walking in divine health, walking in wholeness. And so I speak that over you in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, we have a, a couple more words of knowledge for you from one of our students. Thank you, Will. Hey, my name is Xander, and I'm a second year student at Global School of Supernatural Ministry. And as I was praying to receive words of knowledge, I received three. And the first one is, I believe somebody has a broken ankle. And so I just want to speak to that ankle. And we say, every broken bone in the ankle be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray and speak to the ligaments and the tendons in the ankle. And we say, be restored in the name of Jesus. The second one I got is trauma and an injury to the head. And so right now in the name of Jesus, I speak to the trauma in the brain, the trauma in the head, and I say, be healed. All pain leave in the name of Jesus. We speak to any swelling around the brain, and we say, leave in Jesus' name. And the last one I got is, I believe somebody has a respiratory problem and trouble breathing, and it causes them to, yeah, just not be able to breathe well. And so I just want to pray for you if that's somebody on here. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak life to the lungs. We command that the person would be able to breathe well, that they'd be able to breathe properly in the name of Jesus. We speak to every part of the lung, and we say, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we're, we're getting closer to, to the end of uh, this time with you this, this afternoon, my encouragement to you is take these truths apply them to your life and don't think that's going to bring breakthrough just overnight you didn't get to where you are uh, right now overnight and so it's going to take a period it's going to take time you know have to develop new disciplines new habits new ways of thinking but i promise you this the journey to walking in wholeness and the journey to walking in health and healing starts right now. The moment that you make the commitment in your mind to say, you know what, I'm going to tr transform the way that I think in regards to healing. I'm going to look at God's Word as, as medicine that brings health to my body. And I'm also going to look at my voice as a weapon of warfare towards sickness. And so I saw a couple of people, you were making comments about having foot pain and ankle pain. And so I just speak right now to the, to the foot issues that you're dealing with, to that pain that's in your foot. And I command all that pain to leave right now in the name of Jesus. I even speak a creative miracle to come into, into uh, the joints uh, that some of you, I feel like someone right now is kind of dealing with arthritis in the joints. And I just speak to the arthritis that's in the joints. And I command all that pain and arthritis in the joints to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just declare wholeness over every person that's watching right now. Even if these words are not specifically for you, that doesn't mean that you can't receive healing. So I just want to speak this in a general sense. Anybody that needs healing that's watching right now, just close your eyes. I speak right now from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. 
for your body to come into divine order and divine alignment with the word of God that by Christ wounds you are healed. And so I just speak that blessing over you and I just declare right now health into your physical body. And listen, family, we have one more uh, word of knowledge here from one of our own staff uh, people and then we're going to close it out. But it's been a wonderful time to be with you. Hey, everybody. My name is Paul. And uh, what I saw is that someone is wearing a back brace and they have back pain, back issues. I also saw a torn rotator cuff. I also saw IBS and it was like irritable bowel syndrome. That's what IBS stands for, of course. Um, and it was like anxiety was causing the IBS and then the IBS was causing more anxiety. And it was like this terrible spiral and, and you felt a sense of hopelessness, like you're never going to get better. and and because the anxiety and the IBS are just feeding off of each other and it's just getting worse and worse. And so I just felt a sense that, that Jesus wants to forgive you for hopelessness, that he has forgiven you for hopelessness. And you don't need to feel any condemnation for that. And that he's healing you of both anxiety and the irritable bowel. Um, I also saw a cataract. And the impression I got is that, that you couldn't afford the surgery and you were putting off getting the surgery to to uh, correct or, or heal, remove the cataract in your eye. Um, and then I also saw plantar fasciitis, and I saw you um, like rolling your foot on a golf ball to try to break up the, the tightness, the inflammation in your, in your feet. And so in Jesus' name, I just speak to each of these conditions. I command healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I claim uh, inheritances right now as sons and daughters of God that healing is our inheritance and so I just claim that on behalf of these precious people I command healing I thank you Lord for what you're doing in their bodies and in their lives in Jesus name amen amen listen family we're as we've come to the close of our time together again my encouragement to you is just lean into the Lord apply these principles these practices to your life and I promise you you will begin to see breakthrough given time and consistency to it you know it's you know the bible says it's the renewing of the mind not the renewed mind it means it's continual and it's daily and so my encouragement to you family is apply these things to your life and begin to develop these practices that's going to promote healing and health in jesus mighty name i love you guys blessings <music>